is uh, on how to export in Blender 4.3.2, which uh, simplified kind of the uh, menu for the rendering tab, okay? So we have an animation here of just Leo jumping, okay? There's a little, kind of like a video game jump, so you can see there's a little bit of uh, float in there, like Virtua Fighter or Tekken, if you've seen those fighting games. All right. Um, a lot of these uh, nulls and controllers for the uh, character here are not going to be rendered because, as you can see here, I put uh, an X or I turn off renderability, which is the camera icon. When you have the eye icon turn off, you won't see it, but it will still render because the, re the camera icon is on. So this needs to be off in order to not render, okay? So if these things are on, all the uh, extra stuff, you can see they become part of the render. And from the previous week, when we want to just render a still shot, okay? We can go to render right here, render image, and it will render. This is not saved yet, but as you can see, all the other stuff are also rendered because I did not turn that off, okay? So very important that you hide all the things you don't want to be rendered, like the helpers and controllers, okay? So let's say this is what we want, and to in order to save this image right here, we go to image, save a copy, uh, give it a format, so requirement for your homework would be JPEG, give it a name where you want to save it, click save and you get that image, all right? So let me uh, turn off all this stuff now so they don't get part of the render, okay? As you can see, you see all these helpers, but when I click render, they're not part of it, okay? They're all gone now, it's just a shadow of Leo. All right, so when we render also, the default for rendering is 1920 by 1080, which is HD resolution. Where did we find all the settings? So if you look down here, the first tab is your render tab, okay? We have three engines when we render. We have EV, Cycles, and then Workbench. Don't worry about Workbench right now, that's just when uh, you just wanna work simple and you don't want anything taxing to your computer. So EV is the real-time renderer, okay? Real-time engine. What does that mean? Uh, a video game is a real-time engine, okay? It renders it close to what it should look like live, okay? So this one is live right here. So when we want to see this while we're working, let's say in solid mode, you're probably familiar with the shading, right? When we first start Blender, your cube kind of looks like this, okay? Would, then we start adding color and then lights. This is the preview mode, which is the third sphere. As you can see here, it looks pretty good, but it's flat. There is no uh, highlights and shadow, agree? So, I mean, there's some shading, there's some high, but it's more like uh, ambient uh, shadows in there, okay? So, the fourth one really shows you what this thing should look like when it's rendered, okay? As you can see, there is now highlights. You see the highlights? And there's a shadow. So, the fourth one shows you what it should look like close to it, okay? And when we're rendering in Eevee, this is a fast render because it is a real-time engine, okay? It's meant for visual feedback, live feedback. And when we render it, these are old computers. It's still, uh, you know, 0.72 of a second, okay? So, uh, that's pretty fast, okay? The other engine, stay away from from this for now, we will use this for your final project, is Cycles. Cycles has ray tracing. So this one is what you would call photorealistic render, okay? It, this thing is not, this scene is not lit as a photorealistic because it's a cartoony character and all that, but if you want to get as close to photorealistic, you use the Cycles render, okay? So the uh, Cycles render has ray tracing, Okay, in order to uh, uh, get ray tracing, uh, we have to simply enable it, 
okay? And uh, I mean, uh, we don't have to enable it. It's already on, whether you like it or not. You get ray tracing, okay? We can only uh, uh, change uh, a few settings here to make it more optimized, but I would say default stuff without touching it, it looks pretty good, okay? And then you start seeing some artifacts and whatnot, and then you start tweaking it, okay? So this is what it looks like when it renders, and let's take a look at the time difference, okay? I'm in cycles right now. I'm going to render image, all right? It's not done yet. Ray tracing simply, it's bouncing light like in the real world, right? When a light hits a surface, it's, it bounces it back to a surface and that surface bounces it back again until that is all over. All right, so it, it took 19, say, let's say 20 seconds. The previous one, less than a second, okay? This one is 20 seconds. So you can, t you can see now the difference between the two how quick the other one is, and I doubt uh, with this simple uh, setup here that you'll really appreciate cycles versus EV. EV is probably good enough for uh, a setup like this, okay? So for the purpose of your computer not turning to dust when you're rendering for now, until I tell you to use cycles, which we will, uh, everything is done through EV, agree? So EV is what we're using for the render engine. And when you go to EV, make sure shadows, ray tracing, and simplify are all checked. Okay? Whatever check mark you see in this video right here, just leave those alone. Samples, leave it at 64 for render. The higher the number of samples, the less noise it is, the a lot cleaner it is. Okay? But it will be longer. Okay? So if I put 128 samples here, more than likely it will double to 40 seconds of render instead of 20 seconds. The viewport sample is what you're seeing here, okay? So it's just uh, for the viewport, kind of like DPI when you, uh, when you print versus what you see on your screen. You're cap at 72 and when you print, uh, what is the uh, bond paper? 300 DPI, right? At least minimum on that one. All right, so that's the engine okay and we're using ev put it make sure you have check marks on shadow ray tracing and simplify okay the next tab when we render is this one right here which is the output it looks like a printer with a paper sticking out okay so the format right here is your resolution so resolution simply means how big of a render do you want right what are movies now 4k right so 4K is actually a particular number, not really 4K for video at least. It's, uh, you know, it's uh, something else. So in order for that, uh, we can do some math right here. So I can put times two on 1920. When I press enter, it changes it to 3840, 1080. I'm gonna multiply that by two times two, 2160. So now this is 4K resolution. Okay, not real 4K, but Ultra HD. So when we render this now in EV, look how bi much bigger it is. And it's now 2.13, okay, instead of 0.79 seconds. So it's still fast, but you can see how much bigger this one is, okay? So versus 1080. So for our purpose, while we're practicing animation and all that, or for our renders, 1080 is good enough for now, okay? So the default one, you don't even need to change it. So this is just 1920 by 1080. All right? So we know what to do when we render an image, correct? Image, save a copy, change that to JPEG, give it a name, tell it where to be saved, right? Mostly desktop because you can easily find it, okay? What about an animation? Animation is a little bit different because it requires more frame. This particular animation takes about 60 frames to complete, okay? 60 frames to complete. So by default, we use 24 frames per second for our animation, okay? I know this is a 3D modeling, but again, 
some of you will be uh, doing animation with your models, uh, you know, uh, with other classes or even with this class. So let's, uh, we need that in there. So format, like I said, that's the size. Ignore everything here, leave everything as default. Don't touch those stuff, and, uh, not unless you know what you're doing with your aspect ratio, okay? Frame range, okay? So actually it's not one to 60, uh, it's actually one to uh, 64 here. So we are rendering one, uh, uh, frame one to 64. Okay, so that's our range. So this playback right here. Okay, next one is output. Where do you want to save this file? But before we jump in there, let's first change it to a movie file output. Okay, so file format, PNG, that's a still image, agree? JPEG is a still image. If I look at file format, change that to MPEG video, that means I don't want a still image, I want a movie file, okay? Ignore color management for now. There's more to this than just simply selecting, um, uh, you know, uh, overriding the uh, default, okay? So just ignore that for now. We can go to encoding. Encoding basically is your codec. So you need to use a codec that's quite popular that would play on almost all computer, okay? Matroska is a really good one, but we don't want to use that because this doesn't get previewed on MS Teams, meaning when you use MKV, it will you can only watch it on a computer preview, okay? When you're on a mobile, I mean, sorry, on a mobile, you can preview it, but on a computer, it says, I don't know this file. So we don't use Matroska. We use QuickTime, okay? So first, change your file format to MPEG video. Then change your <sighs> container to QuickTime. Okay, and then the real codec right here, we're just going to be using H.264, okay, which is uh, standard, okay, so it gives you best bang for the buck, uh, best quality for the smallest amount of uh, uh, file size. Output quality from medium, just change that to high quality. We're not doing anything major, um, majorly big or whatnot, so we're not too concerned about the file size, okay? So let's uh, do a rundown on this one. For, so first, uh, change your file format to MPEG video, change your encoding container to QuickTime, video to H.264, high quality, and if you have audio, let's say you put a jumping sound, a landing sound on um, this character, and set up no audio, you can pick one of this codec, any of them would work. The most popular one probably that you know is MP3. Okay, so you can put that or you can just use uh, linear PCM, okay, uh, good compression, okay, you can just leave that and you'll have audio. If you don't have any audio, but you added PCM right here, it just makes the file just a little bit bigger, but there's really no audio, I mean, the data is too tiny, okay, but that's how you add the audio. And after all this, you are now ready to give it a file, right, so you can click on the uh, navigate or browse folder, you give it a name, and you just tell it to where to be dumped. I'm gonna put it on the desktop right there. Once I hit accept right here, it will generate then a path where Leo, okay, uh, animation will be, it's on the desktop, okay? Then we can go to our render up here, click on render animation, and it will show you now frame by frame that it's creating that movie. So this is what you call an image sequence, okay? Since we use a container, meaning it will be contained by QuickTime, it will stitch it together. So the image sequence will become a movie, okay? So this is kind of like back in the day with film. They shoot film and then it, that's like, think of it like a single photograph. And then uh, they run on a negative Fast enough, persistence of vision, it tricks the eye that you're not watching single photos, you're actually watching a movie, okay? But in reality, they're single photos. Okay, so this is almost done, and it's done. 135 uh, megabytes right there, uh, tiny, so I'm going to go and uh, look for it. Uh, Leo... Okay, there it is. And now, the QuickTime video, okay? 
All right, so that's how you export a still image and uh, animation with audio or without audio in the new Grease Pen, I mean a Blender 4.3.2 and moving forward. Just remember, you need to have shadows, ray trace, and simplify and just leave everything by default for now.